Hey, what's the deal, YouTube? It's your girl, Miss Honey. Welcome back to the channel, you guys. It is your girl, Miss Honey, here for a Married to Medicine review. You guys know this is um, super exciting. Why? Because Miss Honey is not doing a lot of reality TV right now. But she does have a couple of reality TV surprises out there for you. So stay tuned. Um, but today we're going to be talking about Mar the Married to Medicine. This is season eight. And um, one of the reasons I love Married to Medicine uh, original is because it's in Atlanta. And uh, I love to see my city as well as these ladies do a lot of good collectively and i like to see that i really do i will tell you that um there's no sugar coating it they are in the midst of the pandemic they're still um you know they're doctors and doctors wives so it is unavoidable them dealing with this whole pandemic situation you know, a lot of people feel like, okay, we're dealing with it out here. Um, and we don't want to also be looking at it on TV. I d disagree with that in the sense that we just need to continually be reminded that there is something major going on because the way these folks is out here in these streets, <laughs> <laughs> like it's just another day you know what I mean like no we need to be reminded we need to be continually reminded about you know the what's what of the what you know so uh obviously the show opens up and there's this montage from um our our original cast as many of them as we have left um, and they're talking about not just the pandemic and how it's affecting them and their families, but also how um, the racial tension of 2020 and still 2021 spilling into 2021, if we be if we're honest with ourselves, is affecting them as doctors, as um, black women as black wives it, with black husbands and black sons and you know it just trying to navigate those things um you know I, I will I will say this when you have black sons I think um, those emotions are a little bit more um on the surface and uh you can you can feel the emotions behind it you can feel the intention behind it you can feel the seriousness behind it um when you're dealing with individuals that are not as in touch which i don't feel like dr jackie is as in touch and i can kind of relate to it because i don't have children and Sometimes things as it pertains to, to young people doesn't connect with me as much, but I have feelings. I have brothers. I have a father. You know, I have tons of black males, nephews, friends, exes, whatever that I have empathy and compassion for. And, you know, as a whole, uh, I try to try to be as empathetic as possible. Dr. Jackie always comes off as a little out of touch to me. I don't know. Like I said, I can relate in a way, but it's just something about her. I don't know. She's just a, a really, really controlled, kind of closed off individual. Even with this whole Simone situation, I feel like you have to know her. And, um, when you know her, you know what emotionalism is <laughs> from her. But anyway, recap everybody, Toya is doing really good in her neighborhood. Her boys are getting older and they're starting to look a lot more like Eugene, the older that they get. Um, Jackie's house is finished and, um... She, like I said, she's concerned about her relationship with Simone. 
she and Curtis are getting settled in. The house is not uh, complete. And she wants to get rid of all of her old furniture and get new furniture. You know, she goes from project to project to project. And as exasperated as Curtis gets about this, she wouldn't be focused on any of this if you let her get a baby. If you let her get a child. <laughs> but she ain't got no children. She ain't got no children. So she's gonna she's gonna be putting all of this this extra energy and this extra time that she and Simone both have because practices have slowed down a little bit. They're doing more telemedicine um, than they are in the office. And um, so she's got a little bit more time at home, Curtis. If you had let, at least let the girl get a foster baby, let her be a big sister or something. And she won't be wearing your nerves around that house. But I digress. Um... You know, this is this is front end of the pandemic. So everybody's wiping stuff down still and, you know, being super, super cautious. I'd like to see people now, you know, now that we know a little bit more about it. But anyway, um, Heavenly is, she looks good. She's lost a little bit of weight and um it's Damon's 50th birthday so she's going to throw a 50th birthday celebration um all of the doctors uh are doing what you know they can um Damon's church that's what the show called it it should be Damon and Heavenly Heavenly's church but apparently it's predominantly Damon's church um, is doing COVID testing and Dr. Jackie, Dr. Heavenly, uh, I believe Dr. Eugene, um, I said Dr. Jackie, Dr. Damon, I, everybody, I think with the exception of Dr. Simone showed up for this event. Um, and again, this is one of the reasons why I love this show is because you do see a lot of outreach, both, um, you know, stateside and abroad, um, which I love. I, I really do. I, it's, it's the best part about the doctors in this, in, in this show. Um, you know, Dr. Damon is, um, the thing that gives heavenly validity. I mean, he's the best part of that unit. Uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, it's his 50th birthday. So, um, all the ladies are going towards this. Dr. Contessa, Dr. Contessa, I believe was there as well. If I'm not mistaken, it was Dr. T Contessa or Dr. Scott. Um, let me just talk about Dr. Contessa and Dr. Scott since I gave a recap on how all the ladies are doing. Um, Dr. Contessa looks really, really good. Dr. Scott look real, real good. We see the doctors coming in, him and Eugene, taking their clothes off when they get in the garage, right? When they first come in the door, bagging them up, tagging them up and putting them in the laundry. And, um... Dr. Scott looked good. Dr. Scott had his shoulders out and stuff. I was like, oh, okay, Scott. <laughs> we did not see this Dr. Scott last year. We didn't. We saw, you know, worried face Dr. Scott. But we didn't see this Dr. Scott last year. Okay, y'all know we're going into allergy season. So, y'all have to excuse me. I feel like it's better to go ahead and take you a little piece of napkin and get rid of that itch than it is to stick your hand up there on camera. But y'all just going to have to bear with me, okay? So, um, yeah, um, he looked good. What I loved about um, uh, Dr. Scott and Dr. Contessa was the kids. You know, little Lay Layla! Layla! Layla, get down. Layla, stop. Layla, no. Layla, settle down. Layla's choking. <laughs> Layla, don't eat that. Layla, put that down. Y'all know Layla is still 
zero to 60, mostly 60, right? Well, they've been having trouble finding uh, a good babysitter, nanny type individual. So, um, I think it's Scott's niece or maybe Contessa's niece. Um, I think it's Scott's niece though. I mean, I technically it's both of their nieces, I guess, if they're married. But anyway... They've got a niece and she and her partner have come down to um, help with the kids. And they seem like very smart, very conscientious individuals. Um, the niece is very holistic. You know, she's into wellness and all of this stuff. So you don't really have to, I think, worry about her being like this overly aggressive um you know, physically stringent person, you know, that's not the type of kids these kids are. They're, they're used to being, you know, loved on and, and reared up in a certain way. They seem both to have that um, energy. They seem to both be very smart. I love the idea of kitty yoga. I think that is a brilliant idea because you have to think about these vessels that we walk around in or go through our journey with is so full up of anxiety and energy and and uh, emotions and feelings just in general, it's a lot going on. And just starting out as children, learning how to bring yourself to center, learning how to concentrate, learning how to focus, to zone out and you know zone inward, it's brilliant. It's absolutely positively brilliant. The two older kids seem very receptive to it. Prior to Contessa and Scott entering into um, the session, which is in their backyard, um, Layla, 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 stop. <laughs> Layla, please get down. She seemed like she was into it too. And, uh, you know, it does seem like it could be, you know, it could go too far, maybe be on a little bit more of a kooky side. But um, I think the overall benefit of of having these two individuals who seem, like I said, very conscious um, individuals, you know, helping with the kids is going to be beneficial. I think that this kitty yoga situation needs to be capitalized on ASAP. I think it's an absolutely brilliant idea. You guys tell me what you think about it. Now, let's go to this party. So, um, like I said, Simone and um, Jackie are not copacetic. They are cordial. They speak. They say hello. And across the parking lot, you know, they work not too far from each other. They were having lunch together every day last season, this season, because the rift that has happened with um, Jackie's relationship with Heavenly um, is apparent and um, it has taken its toll. And uh, Jackie seems sensitive about it and emotional about it. Um, I think Jackie... To me, she's giving me this energy like she just wants things to go to back back to way it was. And she wants Simone to just deal, right? And Simone seems like she wants it to be very, very clear coming from Jackie that she's number one. And that looks, to me, looks like, for what that looks like to Simone is Jackie not hanging, I think with heavenly at all but jackie enjoys hanging with heavenly i just don't understand how um a 20 something year relationship from from um you know from these ladies is supposed to crumble under the weight of dr heavenly like to me it doesn't say as much about Dr. Heavenly, who, in my opinion, is not that special. Um, it says a lot about you guys, lady, you ladies, and your investment in one another. Because I wouldn't give my friend up. If I was you, Simone, I wouldn't give my friend up. No, she can't have my friend. Uh-uh. No. 
I sn- that just wouldn't happen. Okay. And at the same time, what are you getting Dr. Jackie from Dr. Heavenly or this, this insistence upon being um, anchored to Dr. Heavenly that is more important than this 20 something year relationship you have with your good friend. Like you guys are smarter than this. You two are smarter than this. And 20 something years of friendship is supposed to be able to withstand these types of storms. It's definitely supposed to be able to withstand these outcome outside entities coming in and just pissing all over the whole situation. Like, come on, seriously. Okay. But it's a part of it. You know, it's part of the drama and everything. So Heavenly is having this birthday party and it's, it's typical Heavenly. Like I said, Heavenly looks good. She's lost a little bit of weight. All of these ladies look like they've been cast back to the first season. The hair, the makeup, the wigs, the um, styles seem to seem dated to me. It seems a little late nineties, early two thousand ish to me. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know if it's the pandemic or what. Um, even that little get up that Heavenly had on at uh, Dr. Damon's party that was, you know, this tie up situation, like the way her underwear was cutting her. But, you know, Heavenly is um, is always presentable in terms of she's got a bra and panties on. She's got clothes on. Right. But other than that, she has no sense of style. You can see it in her home. You can obviously see it in her, um, hosting and her event planning, you know, to have these printed signs taped up everywhere. Like, uh, yeah, you don't, uh, if it's a door, you don't want people to go in. You just lock it. You just lock it. You don't need a sign to say keep out. You just lock it. Like a paper sign. Not even laminated. Like she's never ever going to be polished. But that whole outfit where it's kind of tied around. I felt like that was some old SWV. Uh, Lil Mo. Uh, Foxy Brown type 1990s. What was it? What was it giving us? The color like. Um, Contessa with that sparkly dress on. It was a cute little dress, but she just, she just looked like a Donna Summer type, um, remake. Um, Dr. Jackie kind of always looks the same. She always looks like the stern librarian, you know, muscular features. You know, she gives me old Jody Watley. <laughs> old Jody Watley feel. You remember how muscular Jody Watley used to be? Anyway, um, yeah, it's, and the coloring, the colors, like the lighting or something, like it was just dark. I don't know. It was just giving me the whole episode. The ladies kind of look throwback to me. Y'all tell me what you think. Put it down below. But of course the, the, um, major, elephant in the room is this dynamic, this new dynamic between Simone and Dr. Jackie. And, um, you know, Simone was steady throwing shade at, at Heavenly, but she's at their function. Probably because it was Damon's function. I don't know if she would have, would have been as cordial and it's polite if it was just heavenly's function or if she would have even come if it was just heavenly's function. But she was there to support um Dr. Damon. Um I think that the ladies you know the juxtaposition between what the ladies were concerned about which was entertaining us with this drama and this pseudo tension with Dr. Jackie and Dr. Simone the, the men were talking about serious cultural 
concerns as it pertains to race. Dr. Damon said as a black man, he's had a gun pulled on him twice for no reason. That is a huge amount of times. I know it don't seem like it, uh, especially, but if you ain't been to war, that is a lot of times to have a gun pulled on you. Mind you, it's just the trigger away from releasing a piece of hot metal at an alarming rate of speed. Like, I don't even play. My brother brings his gun in and sits down and, and, and sometimes he cleans it at the dining room table. You know, he puts the cover down and he will... Um, have all the bullets out of it and everything, but the empty gun turned towards where I'm sitting, like I'm eating. I take a pin or something and I twirl that joker, the barrel of that joker towards the window. I don't want it facing me. I don't care the way it's got bullets in it or not. It's a horrifying feeling. I think to have a gun pulled on you. And he said he's had it happen to him twice. Even um, Cecil telling his story, like it was, it was a much more enriching conversation. I did enjoy the balance with the ladies. Um, but just to give you an idea of, of in terms of the conversation, you know, it, it was a good couples party in that sense, right? Um, Toya was drunk. I'm not really sure why she wants this to be continually her story is that she's drunk and belligerent and the over talker, but perhaps she is, um, doing what she has to do to, um, make herself seem more relevant as it pertains to the show. Right? Like her son said, you not a doctor. So, um, the show goes off right there in this contentious moment. Jackie does get up and says, I'm going to hug you, Simone, whether you want it or not. Um, Simone had an issue with the fact that Dr. Jackie was sitting there and wasn't saying much to her, but you entered the room. I think when you enter a room, you have an obligation to, um, to speak to everyone in that space. Do you know what I mean? Like if you walk up to a table full of people, you're obligated to say, hello, how are you? How's it going? How's the family? You know what I'm saying? You just go around and speak to everybody. That's just what it is. And if you're in a place where you can hug, typically that's what we do. We go around and we give everybody a hug and, you know, ask how they're doing or whatever and just kind of catch up and keep, you know, this, this constant steady um, movement in the river of conversation, right? So Simone could have spoken just as easily to Jackie. Um, like I said, I have no idea why it is you guys, um, are allowing 20 years of friendship to come to this place other than it's necessary for you both to appear as though you have something to talk about. I, call bull crap on it. It doesn't feel real to me from either side. And I'll be honest with you in closing, I do miss Quad and I do miss Mariah. I think they both added a texture to this show that was natural and um, easy. I think that the people that they are throwing into the mix, this Nyla person, and we're going to get to see Carrie. I think she's the other addition or the re-addition. Um, as well as Dr. Heavenly. Um, it's kind of like a forced texture. It's kind of like a forced um, bit of a bit of flavor, a bit of you know, something special. I always feel like what's going on with Dr. Heavenly is more of an obnoxious um, act of attention. Uh, I don't know what we're going to get from Carrie in terms of texture. I think uh, her relationship Mar with Mariah kind of balanced that out, but we're going to see. And this Nyla person um, seems okay. She seems all right. I, you know, she was kind of interjecting a little bit 
in the conversation that they were all sitting around trying to have about Dr. Jackie and um, that type of thing. Um, you know, it seemed like an odd place for her to be interjecting herself. She should have been doing more listening. But we say that about all the new girls, right? Like, mind your business. But, you know, they got to make that first season for them pop or they out. Right. Um, Dr. Heavenly checking Toya about her tone to Damon. To me, that's getting real old from Dr. Heavenly, especially because you come out your mouth any, any old kind of way to these women and their husbands. So, um, yeah, I, I, I would like to see some reckoning as it pertains to Dr. Heavenly this season. That's what to me will make this season worth it. You guys tell me what you think. Are you guys watching Married to Medicine this season? How did you feel about this first episode? I'd love to know. Put it down below. And until next time, honeybees. I holla.